as a virtual you, और, आ, आज का ये कार्यक्रम जो के जो चीफ ओरेटर हैं डॉक्टर यादव वो हम लोगों को इम्प्लांट्स के बारे में फ्रॉम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम बेसिक टू एडवांसमेंट के बारे में बताएंगे इसमें मैं सिर्फ मैं कुछ शब्द कहना चाहूंगी कि हम लोगों ने पहले कहा जीरो मतलब जीरो से शुरू करके जीरो से तो आप नहीं कह सकते सबसे पहले आरपीडी फिर एफपीडी फिर बेसिक ब्रेनमार्क ऑस्ट्रो इंटीग्रेशन पे आ, बेस्ड इम्प्लांट्स और उसके बाद समय समय पर उस पर मेटीरियल्स में जो एडवांसमेंट आते रहे और जो क्लिनिकल सिनेरियोज में चेंजेस होते रहे उनके अनुसार जो इंजीनियरिंग वर्क में जो एडवांसमेंट आते रहे उन पे आज हम लोग काफी जैसे कि मिनी इम्प्लांट्स देन कॉर्टिकल इम्प्लांट्स जेगोमेटिक इम्प्लांट्स एंड टेरिगोड इम्प्लांट्स एंड अभी कस्टमाइज इम्प्लांट्स पे हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं और आपने पीछे कुछ दिनों में देखा होगा कि जो म्यूकर माइकोसिस के पेशेंट्स आए उनमें उनका जो रिहेबिलिटेशन है और जो वो बहुत डिफिकल्ट है वो उन पेशेंट्स का रिहेबिलिटेशन सिंपल जो इम्प्लांट्स हैं उनके आधार पे नहीं किया जा सकता है उनमें जो जेगोमेटिक इम्प्लांट्स एंड टेरगोड इम्प्लांट्स हैं उनका बहुत उनकी बहुत बड़ी भूमिका है जिससे कि पेशेंट सुचारू रूप से अपनी जिंदगी में खाने पीने में और रिहेबिलिटेशन में एस्थेटिक्स में उनको सहायता मिलती है और हम लोगों ने ये भी देखा है कि अब हम लोगों पेशेंट्स को कोई रिफ्यूज नहीं करता है हम लोग ट्राई करते हैं मॉडिफाई करके कि कोई ग्राफ्टिंग करके सॉफ्ट टिश्यू ग्राफ्टिंग हार्ड टिश्यू ग्राफ्टिंग एंड मॉडिफिकेशन इन डिजाइन ऑफ इम्प्लांट सो दैट वी कैन रिहेबिलिटेट दम इन बेटर वे तो मैं Uh, आगे बहुत ज्यादा uh, आप लोगों का समय ना लेते हुए मैं पहले बा, पहली बात तो आप लोगों को इस बात का बहुत बहुत साधुवाद देना चाहती हूँ कि आप लोग समय समय पर इस तरीके के कार्यक्रम करते रहते हैं जिससे कि एक तो uh, सबको इसके बारे में जानकारी होती रहती है और ये हम लोगों को अपना जो भी ज्ञान है उसको फ्रेशन अप हमेशा करते रहे इसी में uh, इसी से एडवांस हो सकते हैं क्योंकि हम लोगों का जो काम है तो ऐसा नहीं है कि आपने एक बार सीख लिया फिर आपने बंद कर दिया आपको थ्रू आउट योर करियर यू हैव टू लर्न फ्रॉम एवरीबडी यू हैव टू लर्न अभी जो हम लोग जो पढ़ते थे और अब जो उसमें बहुत ज्यादा अंतर आ चुका है अब हम लोग अपने जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं उनसे भी सीखते रहते हैं तो इसलिए ये हम लोगों का लर्निंग कर तो हमेशा चलता रहता है इसलिए मैं आप सभी लोगों का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहूंगी कि आप लोगों ने मुझे अवसर ये दिया कि मैं आप लोगों के साथ बातचीत कर सकूं और आप लोगों से कुछ सीख बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू प्रियंका थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू सो मच आपने हमारे साथ जो भी शेयर किया उसके लिए मैम नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम आवर एमिनेंट मेंटर फॉर टूडेज टॉक डॉक्टर अनुराग यादव सर वेलकम सर डॉक्टर अनुराग यादव सर इज एन ओरल एंड मैक्सिलोफेशियल सर्जन he completed his bds in 2003 from sardar patel lucknow and then his mds from subharti meerut in 2008 presently he is working as an head and neck onco and reconstructive surgeon at bareilly international university bareilly and is also a professor at the department of oral and maxillofacial surgery in in the institute of dental sciences bareilly sir has a number of awards he's been awarded the national award by the association of oral surgery in 2011 the health icon award in 2016 the awardee of the year 2019 by icn group of media technology for his contribution in the field of research he also has a various national as well as international publications to his credit he has a teaching experience of both of 13 years at both the undergraduate and the postgraduate levels he has also been a member of the organizing committee of various conference he has 14 years of experience in the fields of implant he has a vast expertise in the field of orthognathic surgery oral cancer surgery cosmetic surgery reconstructive surgery he has successfully operated more than 1400 cases of oral cancer as with uh, as for implants he does conventional routine implants as well as basal implants pterygoid implants zygomatic implants buccal shield technique beck system 
sandwich graft and implant he even has a patent on dental implant design called the apical fixation technique to his credit he is also a director and implant mentor of sanjeevni educational uh, sanjeevni education lucknow branch and is running his own implant training center academy for the last 5 years uh, and he has trained six batches with candidates from all over up uttarakhand delhi bihar madhya pradesh and assam he has also started an oral cancer and Re- reconstructive fellowship program in the year 2020 which is the only authorized fellowship of its kind in the whole north india so that is quite a a, a b- big introduction sir i welcome you and i request you to please enlighten us on the topic of today the basics to advancements of implantology over to you sir Uh, so you are not audible so Uh, sir is joining us. There is uh, some technical issue. Okay. Okay. We are just waiting for sir to join. He'll join us very soon, and we'll start the session. Till sir join uh, all the participants, uh, I would like to inform you that MACS Dental School keep on organizing these small webinars, these educational uh, mini webinars for all the dental uh, people, our dental team, uh, pan India and abroad. So you people, if you want to carry on with this session and be part of what we are organizing. you can contact the director dr priyanka yadav ma'am or any other team member feel free to do so and any queries will be entertained will be answered so don't hesitate and i hope that people who have joined us before and are joining us now will continue to be part of our team also participants during the webinar you can note down your questions and send them in the chat box after the webinar is over we'll ask the questions and we'll clarify our doubts
there a few questions popping up in chat section uh, there was a technical glitch it is sort uh, it's it's sorted right now so please keep a little more patience and sir is just joining us we'll be starting with a seminar straight away thank you Uh, sorry for inconvenience. Uh, sir is trying to join us. There is some technical problem from his side. Yeah. Yes. Sir is here with us. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir.
Hello, everyone. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Hello. Hello, everyone. Should I start now? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Sorry for some delay. There was some technical issue. I am Dr. Anurag, and I'll be presenting today the implantology. My topic is implantology, and I'll be presenting the basic to advancements of the implantology. So that is my topic, basics to advancements of implantology. So uh, before I come to the topic, let's see that what is the utility of an implant that we all are now aware these days that what are the implants, but still uh, we'll see a few facts about the implants, what are the implants, how to do that. And everything cannot be covered with uh, a single presentation, but still I'll try to cover the maximum aspects of implantology. A to Z means we'll see all the types of implants which we use in our oral cavity as well as, well as on the face. So we need to find out two things. Like in general, when we see, we don't see too many things. And many times we miss so many things in front of us in dentistry or in our practice. Like there was a picture where we can't see, it is a picture of my kids. So uh, actually the picture was not taken for my kid. It was taken for a white tiger that you can see in the background. So that is the importance of seeing anything with a special interest. What do you want to see? So the picture is only to show you that. So now those, uh, all those who, who are the beginners, I'll give a very one or two minutes short uh, anatomy, detail of the anatomy so that we can understand what the implants are being done. So in the face, you know, there is a mandible as well as a maxilla, and there are so many muscles, nerves, and vessels are coming into the different bones. So like, for example, if we see the maxilla, we know that there is a sinus in the maxilla. So whenever we are placing the implant, we should know the anatomy very well. That's why I put this slide so that if we know the position of the sinus, then we can place our implants well. We should know something that uh, there are certain conditions when we can place the implant, like in pediatric patients, we cannot place implant because again, it can hamper the growth. Whereas in the old age, there are so many changes, like the old age patient, patients, they have lost the bone. So there are so many difficulties in the old age also. I'll not go into the detail of each and everything. So these problems, like old age problems and all, this has gone for the evolution of the implant. And now there are so many advancements, like. There is an example of a picture that you, yellow color you can see is the position of the implant. Where you can see the implant is positioned palatally. Those are the angulated implants. So many implants and many techniques are based on these normal anatomy and abnormal anatomy of the bones. So that is the basic of development of implants. Similarly, if we see the mandible, in the mandible what we can see, we can see the inferior alveolar canal is very important because that comes in the way in many times when there is a age changes have taken place. The intraorbital nerve, uh, sorry, mental nerve. In the mandible, the mental nerve is there. So whenever we are placing the implant, we should understand where to place, what size of the implant, what length of the implant. And then we see the anatomy of the bone. That anatomy of the bone is not very straightforward. What we see in the oral cavity, the tooth is straight. But many times here, for the example, in the first picture, what you can see, the root is going more lingually. Similarly, in the maxilla, the root may be in the center, but when we are going in the mandible, then root may, be, may not be going straight into the bone. It may go maybe slightly lingual. So when we understand all these anatomic things, then we can place the implants better. Like in the mandible, is relatively thinner bone, anteriorly more thin, posteriorly more wide. Inferior alveolar canal, I have already told, it is present in the mandible and sometime when the resorption is there, implant may go into the inferior alveolar canal. So when we see the canal, sometimes we want to place the implant posteriorly, then we should think that the canal is more lingual on the posterior side, so we can place the implant more buccally. And similarly, if you want to place the implant near the mental foramen anteriorly, like in the second premolar or first molar, that canal is buccal. So we can tilt our implant lingually. I don't want to tell you all the techniques. I only want you 
to understand the importance of anatomy. Then, if you understand the importance, uh, the anatomy very well, then we can place different different types of implants very well. Age changes. I have already explained that the resorption takes place with the age, so the canal will be very superficial in old age patients because there will be loss of alveolar bone. So we have to place some different type of implants. So where are, if we see the maxilla, the more bone is available when we compare it with the mandible. But at the same time, maxillary bone resorbs very early and is very thin. So I'll not go into uh, too much of detail of the anatomy. Right. So this is about the maxillary sinus. I have already explained that maxillary sinus is in the maxilla. And sometime when we are doing some advancements of the implant, you must have heard about the sinus lip surgeries and all. Then first, we should always assure that the sinus is healthy. Because if the sinus is healthy, only then we can do the sinus lift procedures. Otherwise, we cannot do sinus lift procedure. Like on the screen, on the left side, you can see a haziness in the sinus. That is an indication that there is some pathology or polyp or something is there, infection is there. So on that side, we cannot do sinus lift procedures. So I've already explained something about the anatomy. Now coming on to the implants. Who can be the implantologist? There is a question. Many things that who can place the implant. Anyone who is having a BDS degree can be an implantologist. And sometimes uh, we already explained how to get started with the implant. You should learn by sharing, by seeing the other cases, by joining the different courses or uh, being a participant in the implant surgeries. You can learn the implant very easily. Because it is not R into the DCI curriculum or subject. It is not as a subject. You should have the knowledge about the surgical instrument kit. What is the kit? If you know the kit well, if you know the anatomy well, if you know the technique, then definitely you can be an implantologist and you can please the implants very well. So before coming on to that, you should know a very basic of the surgical steps that how to place the implant. It is always done into a sequential drilling. It means you can see the first drill is small, next drill is larger, then more larger drill, and in the last is the implant. Actually, this is not the technique, it is just an overview. So now coming on to the fact that what is the need of a dental implant, why we want the dental implant or other techniques, that because it restores the masticatory function, the aesthetics, the speech, confidence of the patient, sometimes it adds with the orthodontic anchorage, and the advantage of the dental implant over the bridge and dentures is also very clear now. Because whenever we are using the dentures, I will not read the slide. I will show you some pictures so you will understand what I want to say. So I will move to the next slide. Why, why we need implant? Because this is a traditional way how to give patient a fixed processes. That is everyone knows it is a crown and bridge. So if we see the anatomy, every tooth bears some load. And that load is shown here in the blue color and you can see if the mandibular tooth is not there mandibular molar is not there so the forces are less on the mandibular arch because here we can see the four only four uh, arrows here and instead of five arrows we are having four arrows so what is going to happen whenever we are going to place the crown and bridge so you can see the force is getting diverted onto the adjacent tooth so now actually our bridge is putting more force on the other tooth, the ab abutments, the subsequent or adjacent abutments, whereas there is no force onto the tooth which is hanging in the mid. So that force is not being transferred. So what happens after some time because of that occlusal pressure, there, there will be breakage, fracture or caries formation on the distal aspects of the bridge. I am very sure you must have seen the pictures like this in your clinical practice. Whenever any patient comes to you with the crown and bridge and that patient is having some problem with the abscess, sometimes with the abscess or caries or bridges moving, then you take out again, you do post and core. So that becomes a sequential treatment. You can see that putting a crown and bridge ensures that patient has to come back after a few years and again has to get the treatment done for the other tooth. So here also another radiography showing the same. Whereas when we do implants, we don't see these problems. The cost of the implant it varies from two three thousand to forty five thousand, depending on to the different different companies. Now question comes: Why 
this cost varies too much so because of their making it is made of the titanium and there are five grades of titanium so grade 1 is cheaper and grade 5 grade 5 is more expensive so here is something about the titanium grade again i'll not go into the very much of the detail but the grade 5 is actually not only titanium but it contains the aluminum and vanadium also along with the titanium which makes it very strong than the other grades so this implant the type 5 grade 5 implants are more costly something about the implant you can see the implant which contains the tooth has three parts one is the implant which is called fixture one is the abutment abutment you all know what is the meaning of the abutment abutment is the connector between the crown and implant that is called abutment and over that abutment crown can be fixed so this implant is called sometime it is called fixture you should know know the different different terminologies before you come to the implants you read about the implants you learn about the implant you should learn about the terminology what are these terminologies sometime it is as i show as i said this is a picture where it is not saying the fixture it is saying that implant abutment as well as processes or artificial tooth so the implants are made of the titanium and the abutments are also made of different different uh, materials it can be titanium it can be silver it can be zirconia it can be lithium so there are many many types of uh, uh, abutments are there and there are the different different types of classifications for the implant but i will not go into too much of the detail of all these because that will be too very boring for all of us so in the broadly we can see this is the different different type of implants those were being used in older times so in my presentation i'll show you what were the old implants and what are the newer implants so there are there were industrial implants in the bones which are being placed there were subperiosteal transosteal and different different implants basically what implants is being done generally is endosteal implant it means the implants are being placed into the bone then one term is there the osteo integration what does that mean osteo integration means the bone fixes with the implant surface in the first picture what you can see the left side gray side is the implant surface and right side which contains the blocks is bone so bone is formed between the implant heads there is the next picture where you can see the bone is not formed so whenever bone will not be formed into the thread it will be a failure so when the bone bone is formed between the thread and implant fixes into the bone that is called osteo integration so our aim is osteo integration whereas some implants nowadays nowadays the basal implant they don't follow the osteo integration they follow the principles of osteo fixation so i'll show you some cases so that can be interesting so the case is immediate implant placement there are two types of implant placement one is immediate and one is delayed immediate means we do the extraction and then we place the implant immediately that is called immediate implant placement delayed implant placement we do the extractions and the then we wait for two months to four months to place the implant again nowadays Uh, some new theory theories are there so that theory says that we can place the implant even after one month but basically the older concept was that we should wait for 3 to 4 months so that bone gets harder and we can place the implant so this picture is around 2006 the implant was done and the immediate implant was done so the extraction was done in the central incisor and you can see the extraction is very atraumatic so that is the aim of our Uh, extraction for the implants that we should not fracture the cortices the adjacent bone buccal or lingual bone or buccal or palatal bone so that our success of the implant is going to be more so after that sometime in the extraction socket we can directly place the implant in the cases of the maxilla or in anterior posterior but mandibular bone is very strong so that we need drilling sometimes so the drilling can be done accordingly and then implant can be placed immediately here you can see the implant has been placed tightened and after that now abutment can be placed and crown can be given so that is called immediate loading and delayed loading immediate loading means that 
as soon as we have placed the implant immediately we have placed the abutment and we have sent it for the crown and after three or four days the lab person will give you the crown and you can fix it so if you fix the crown immediately after placing the implant it is called immediate loading so there are combinations immediate placement immediate loading immediate placement delayed loading delayed loading means we can load the tooth after three months so with the routine endosteal implants as a starter or as a beginner this is a good rule to follow that we always do delayed loading because if we do immediate loading chances of success are going to reduce so delayed loading is more successful than the immediate loading loading means crown delivery so we should mostly we should follow the principle that with the industrial implant we should place the crown after three months that is better so after that impression can be taken and sent for the sent to lab for the fabrication another case where we can see the root stump was there this is the x-ray where the atraumatic extraction has been done and extraction was done with the help of file because if we go for the other methods of extraction probably it is going to traumatize the bone so we don't want the bone to be traumatized or cracked or fractured so both bone files can be used for the extraction drilling can be done according to the sequence and then implant can be placed this is the implant placement so these were very old cases uh, maybe around 17 18 years back when we used to do now coming on to the delayed or secondary implant placement what does that mean that we do the extraction like here is a case that we do the extractions we wait for three months after that we do the drilling we place the implant and then we place the abutments and then we can give the crowns this is also the case where first the extraction was done and after three months the flap was reopened the implant was placed and again the abutment was placed and crown was given so my presentation is showing you very fast actually it is not we are i am not talking about the techniques what are the techniques of implant placement right here i am only showing you what are these implants right another case where drilling has been done flap has been raised drilling has been done and implants were placed and crown was delivered so similarly many cases sometime we can see the bone onto the radiographs but most of the time whenever we see the uh, bones on the radiograph it may not be very accurate so we should be very much careful on measuring the bone onto the radiographs especially the vertical heights the horizontal uh, available width is okay but the vertical height can be questionable because sometimes sinus is drooping and we don't know exactly the floor of the sinus in the especially in the case of the maxilla where it is sometime in the mandible also the lingual cortex is very high and buccal cortex is resolved so in the x ray we see a very good height but practically when we open it we find that the actually there is a thin knife thin edge so we are not able to place the implant properly so the flap has been raised drilling has been done the implant has been placed so these were about the simple implant placements what were the simple implants we can place the implant immediately after extraction we can place the implant after few months that is called delayed implant placement we can load the implant means we can deliver the tooth immediately or we can do after some time maybe after 3 months so immediately it is called immediate loading and after 3 months it is called delayed loading now here are some advancements like sometime we see some cases where the surgeries have been done and actually there is no bone or there is a very less bone like in the case where the maxilla has been removed so now we have a different type of implant those are called zygomatic implants zygomatic implants are the implants which are placed into the zygomatic bone in the maxilla like here you can see the two zygomatic implants have been placed into the maxilla so these pictures are also very old pictures maybe if i remember it is 12 10 12 11 or 12 years old picture maybe near around 2010 or 11 so at that time the zygoma implants were the 
implants which were introduced in India. That was the time. Sometime we do some cases, advanced cases with the implant. We place the implant horizontally into the maxilla. And with the help of that, we can fix the tooth as well as we can fix the artificial processes to the nose. Like the patient is not having the nose, we do some cancer surgeries and the patient is having the patient is not having the nose properly because nose was also removed. Sometimes the eyes were removed. So we can do in the advancement, we a lot of type of implants we can place. Like in the case, there was a case where we had removed the eye of the patient. Like recently last year, you must have heard about the black fungus in eucalyptus. We have removed so many cases. Uh, in so many cases, we have removed the eyeball completely. Eyeball, eyeball was completely removed. After that, we can place the implant into the eyeball walls and we can place small implants. After that, we can. Um, Processes in the eye area, we can give the eye. At the same time, we can give this processes. Sometimes maxilla is also removed with the eye. So we can give the denture as well as we can give the nose to the patient and we can give the eye to the patient. We can give the face to the patient. All things can be secured with the help of implants. There are some advanced cases where we have removed the nose, we have removed the eye, we have removed the maxilla. And after that, we have placed the implant into the maxilla. We have placed the implants into the orbit. We have placed the implant into the face. And after that, the processes have been given like this. So here, patient looks very normal that all the facial structures are restored. So there are so many things with the implant, what not to do and what to do. Uh, very important thing is that planning is very important. Adequate knowledge of the implant is very important because when we are reading about the implants, when we are taking the training of the implant, then we should know all the techniques, what to do, what not to do. Like we should never fix the implant processes with the normal tooth, like in the picture. Because when we fix the implant processes with the normal tooth, then what is going to happen? The tooth is having periodontium and that tooth moves. So when the tooth moves, implant is actually fixed, rigid fixation in the bone. So it is not going to move. So once this continues for a very long time that the implant is fixed to the roots, natural tooth roots, then the tooth moves. And ultimately, after some time, there will be extra pressure onto the bone adjacent to the implant. And after that, the implant is going to fail. So if you want uh, the implant, not to fail, then we should not fix with the natural tooth. Although in the cases, basal implants can be fixed with the tooth. Sorry, we are having some technical issue. We are just working to get it back. Please hold. We'll just be back very soon. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. So uh, only two or three slides left. So when we are going to place the implant, sometimes we come to know that after placing the implant, we should always check 
the flap on the soft tissue flap superiorly because whenever if you are not raising a good flap sometimes the upper portion of the implant can be exposed and we are not raising the flap properly so we don't see that implant is exposed like here in the case so the implant is exposed and there are many chances of failures so and we need to be in the accordance with the crown delivery also because later on whatever the type of implant we place we can place the angulated implants we can place the implant into the zygoma in the maxilla wherever but in the last we have to deliver the processes so that's why teamwork is very important whenever we are placing the implants we should think about the end pro end product it means the prosthetic delivery to the delivery that is very important because when we place the implant we cannot and we cannot deliver the proper tooth then our planning may fail so that's why teamwork is very important that a prosthodontist is also important the lab is also very important the surgery is also very important everything is very important and this is a teamwork initially after that once you get experience then definitely you can do everything single handedly so initially you have to take help of lab and everyone to make your implant successful thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir we'll now be taking some questions any question anyone want to ask uh, sir one sir there are some questions in the chat box i'll ask them uh, so if a patient has a missing lateral and canine can we give a cantilever from canine to lateral with implant placed in the canine region cantilever are not good for the implants we should try to avoid the cantilevers as much as possible because cantilevers are going to give the uh, uh, you can see the swinging action onto the implant so if the anything on the distal aspect if it is cantilever and patient chews the food then definitely that is going to put extra pressure onto the implant and uh, failure of the chances of the implant increases in the chat box what i can see are there any contraindications to immediate loading yes there are so many contraindications to the immediate loading like if you are placing the loading the implant and patient is not uh, patient is not very cooperative and there is too much of calcular stain and you cannot maintain a good oral hygiene that is one of the contraindication patient is having any systemic disease where the patient has bone disease bone disease means low calcium level because of the arthritis or because of some immunocompromised status the patient is on to the corticosteroids then definitely it is contraindicated in the cases of maxillary area we should try to avoid the uh, immediate loading because of the maxillary bone is very soft so chances of failure increases and especially in the maxillary posterior we should not do immediate loading because that chances of failures are more into the into that area very old age patient we should try to avoid the immediate loading so there are so many contraindications for uh, uh, the immediate loading and next question is what is the suitable speed for different type of bones d1 d2 d3 d4 d1 bone is mandibular anteriors d2 bone is mandibular posterior mandibular posterior sometimes weak bone can be d3 also but it is basically mainly d2 the maxillary anteriors a good person having good bone health can be d2 or d3 both or maybe d3 and maxillary posterior is mostly d4 so the harder the bone harder is the speed like if you are placing into the d1 then speed can be 12000 rpm 1200 rpm if the it is d2 then it can be 1000 rpm if it is d3 it can be 800 rpm if it is d4 again it can be around 600 rpm so according to the bone type we have to choose the speed so that cutting can be there if a patient has a missing lateral and canine can you give a cantilever from canine to lateral implant placed at canine region uh missing lateral and canine can i no it is not not good because again patient may have problem in implant may fail is there a is there a limit to lifting the sinus yes there are so many limitations limitations mean in the technical term we don't see limit we don't say limitations we say that there are the indications and contraindications right 
if there is a, any disease in the sinus, we cannot do any polyp is there, any sinusitis is there, or uh, what we can see the bone quality is not very good, patient is medically compromised. Those are the conditions where we cannot do the sinus lift procedures. Uh, the next question is, sinus can be lifted up to only a certain limit of mm. Is it true? No, sinus can be lifted too many mm. I mean, when you are going to place the implant, definitely if the bone is less, you are not going to place 16 millimeter implant. In the less cases, uh, maybe you are going to place a smaller implant, maybe 8 mm or 10 mm. So if there is a 4 millimeter of the bone available, the next is 6 millimeter of the sinus lift can be done. But this Sinus lifting in millimeter is very difficult to assess. So what we do, we follow the rule that how much bone should be there. So uh, in a broader term, if you understand that if the four millimeter of the bone is available, then we can go for sinus lift. If the bone is less, then the chances of failure of the sinus lift may be there. How far up can we lift the sinus? I have already uh, answered this question. I hope you got the answer. Okay. Anything? Anyone want to ask anything? Any other questions anyone has? Please. Sorry, I can't uh, hear you. There is. That's. So I think that's. Question. Can you this type one... in the chat box so I can see? So there's okay. a question. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much. Uh, so there's a question someone wants to ask. Please go ahead. So there's Thank a question uh, with respect to diabetic patients. Like what is the success rate in controlled diabetic patients? Sorry? What is the success rate of implant in controlled diabetic patients? Okay. Controlled diabetic patient the success rate is almost same because what happens if any patient who is diabetic the problem is not only diabetes if he's a diabetic for a long term so what we do we go for a bone scan in the bone scan we are going to see what is the mineralization level what is actually bone matrix so if it is a very soft bone right so that is called Hounsfield units so the Hounsfield units are going to decide the quality of the bone so if the house field units are very less, then there are chances that implant can get failed. So the uh, so the implant success rate is not related directly to the diabetics. We, we, I have placed so many implants in the diabetic patients and those were successful. We have to see the other factors. So you have said that controlled diabetes. Along with the controlled diabetes, we have to see the general health of the patient. If the general health is good, you are going to achieve very good results. And if the diabetes is controlled, but the general health is very poor, I mean, you will see some patients very, some uh, patients who are, who look very sick. Maybe their sugar level is very good because they are taking the drugs. So it is not only the control factor. So other factor, what I told you is the health of the bone. How we can see the health of the bone with the bone scan. We can see Hounsfield units and we can understand the bone health. If the health is poor, there are some suggestions to increase the bone health. Like we should ask this patient to go for implant surgery after three months. In, in those three months, what we, are, what we are going to do, we are going to give them vitamin D3, the calcium, the phosphorus, all the minerals so that the bone gets some strength.
There's some technical issue. Sir will just join us. Participants can drop their queries in the chat box. So will be joining us ASAP. Uh, we're very sorry due to some technical issues. Uh, we'll end it right, right now. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone who joined, all the participants. Uh, our speaker for today, Dr. Anurag Yadav, sir. Dr. Vibha, ma'am, our chief guest. Uh, team MACS, Dr. Priyanka Yadav, ma'am. Dr. Rajkumar, sir. Dr. Arpita, ma'am. Dr. Hridesh, Dr. Devala Roda, Dr. Rupali Sharma, and all the esteemed participants who joined us for today's session. It was a very informative, very enlightening session. Came to know a lot about implants. All of us are practicing also. Plus, it was uh, helped to brush up our knowledge, and we gained quite a few points from it. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.